that is the one who's standing. There's no one from Gordon. Crossroads, and they meet a mysterious, attractive, somewhat suspicious character who upsets their lives. I'm thinking of the talented Mr. Ripley, Cabaret, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Even in Seinfeld, there's an episode where Elaine and Jerry vie for the affection of Keith Hernandez from the New York Mets. Where does this story come from? Um, first of all, I like that you mentioned Seinfeld because I kept, I always said to people like, it's like the, the plot is like a plot of a sitcom, but it's not about the plot, it's what's inside. Um, yeah, I think that like, uh, obviously, I mean, I'm not a 60 plus uh, year old uh, married couple. Um, yeah, so it, it, it mostly came from my parents. Um, yeah. I sometimes, I sometimes deny it, but it's like it's useless to do it. Um, yeah, I, feel, I, I, I had like a long time, um, I guess like observing my parents and, and seeing the, their dynamic and seeing the beauty of it and the, and the relationships uh, failures as well. Um, and uh, I guess like the, the first time I, I realized that I want to write about them or, or, or characters that are similar to them um, was uh, they came one night after they were at this wedding and they asked me to search on Facebook for this uh, couple that they met. And when I did that, I saw a picture of this couple that were I about their age, but very flamboyant, very s a lot like Itzik. Uh, they had like velvet jackets, um, and they had like colorful glasses, and they were like really like, it was very strange to me to see uh, this couple. And when I looked at my parents, I saw them like being completely enchanted and excited about this couple. And, and they looked at them like they, that was kind of like an adventure that could completely changed their lives. And um, I just, I was, I, I, I just related to that feeling I saw in my parents and it made me feel so close to them. And in a way I felt like maybe I can tell something that resemble, resembles a coming of age uh, story. Um, because it's, it, it suddenly felt to me very similar, the, the period of their lives, a moment before retirement and high school and I thought like maybe it would be interesting to kind of like tell my own coming of age story but do it through the perspective and through characters that are in that age and and by that I guess ask the question of can we change later in life can we find you know new aspects of our identity can we can we change inside a relationship uh, our can our partners allow us um, to kind of like discover ourselves. Um, so yeah, and, and, and that's kind of like how it all started, yeah. Thank you, Moshe. We're honored to have you. We're honored to have your film, just as we're so honored to have Sasan Gabe with us. Sasan, you have a curriculum, a sivu in film, which is longer perhaps than any Israeli actor. You can choose almost any role that you want. What drew you to the role of mayor? Well, I, I read the script and uh, instantly I felt that there's something, there's a lot of secrets hiding in the script. And that's what was intrigued me. I wasn't sure completely about this, the script because um, it looked to me not certain enough in one way, but in, in another way uh, it, that he, it's concluded a lot of s small stories that need to be deciphered. Um, and uh, I, th I, th I thought this mainly the challenge for me and for us, the, the actors, 
uh, to do it. And that was, that was what intrigued me into this uh, story. And on top of it, I heard uh, good things about this guy. <laughs> uh, from my colleague Leo Ashkenazi, who played uh, Itzik, and uh, he he worked with him previously, and I really uh, appreciate his opinion. And uh, I met after I met uh, Moshe, I didn't need any recommendation, and uh, uh, so uh, we started to work. And um, I, I think there is a lot of challenges for actor. And this, uh, and, and he gave us uh, uh, Moshe uh, by script, give us this chance to uh, to find the character and to divide it into into beats and moments and fragments. Um, and that's what I like in, in w when I get a script. I don't like scripts that uh, the uh, the characters say all 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 his thoughts and emotions. Uh, I like uh, sc um, um, roles that uh, there's a lot of, uh, they hide more than they are revealing. When Margaret Mitchell wrote her novel, Gone with the Wind, she said she didn't quite know who should play Scarlett O'Hara, and it took them a long time to find Vivian Leigh, but she said it was the role of Rhett Butler was written specifically for Clark Gable. Did you write my ear for Sasan? No. <laughs> I take it as a compliment. <laughs> no, it, it's funny because the, the, the first draft, the, the character of May was written for somebody the age of uh, like 58, something like that. And I'm not going to. And I'm too young for that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he wasn't at the right age. Um, and then we just, we, we kept searching for somebody that, and, and I used to tell to my casting agent, we used to say like, oh, who's like today's like the 50 year old Sasson Gabay? And we're like, oh, who's that? Like, and we couldn't find him because th there isn't any, there's only one Sasson Gabay. And it's very clear when you, you know, when you, when you meet a lot of actors, you realize that, I mean, what we were looking is, is, is an actor that would be, that you could easily see the, the, the kid that he used to be, uh, that you can easily see that this child is still, it, it still exists there. And, and I don't know, with Sasson it was, it was so clearly that, that we eventually gave him like to write, to read the script and, um, and I didn't really think it through, like I didn't think about what's gonna happen if we're gonna say yes, because I thought that he's gonna say yeah, no, because he was in New York and it, was, it felt impossible. Yeah, but then he, 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 was, he, he was like, yeah, I would like to do it. And, and, I, and, I, and, and he, you asked me, he said like, oh, so you want me to do it? And I was like, wait, uh, shit. <laughs> and, then I, and then it took like, I think like an hour or something. And I said like, I'll get back to you. I'm, I'm thinking about it. And I, and I walked outside and it was like a serious thing to suddenly change the script from like a, a 50 something to um, a 60 something. Um, it took you a half an hour to do it. <laughs> yeah, so what I did is that I walked down the street and I looked for signs and I saw like a, um, like a place, like a laundromat that said like Gabai laundromat and I was like, that's a sign, <laughs> I should do it. Um, uh, yeah, and, you, and I have, you have to introduce me to this London. Right? <laughs> I go to wash my clothes there. <laughs> no, but the funny thing is that, like today, when I think about you know not being sure about it, it's crazy. Like it's really like I, I would never, I could never imagine the film with somebody else. And I'm not saying it as I really think that it elevates the film to an, another level. Yeah, it's interesting that you should mention. <laughs> It's interesting that you should mention a laundromat because there's a lot of dirty laundry <laughs> that's aired in this movie. So, son, you go from, I mean, the tone of the film starts from almost light sitcom to something really gut-wrenching where the two of you just tear at each other. Um, as an actor, how do you prepare for that range of emotion? Um, I think uh, you have to give uh, to the moment not more than it deserves. And uh, I, 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 read, I knew the script, I, know, I knew where, where it's going to. And through rehearsals with Moshe, uh, 
um, I, f I found out that the best thing to do is to, to go a bit, by, a bit by bit, moment by moment. And uh, uh, when I watch it, I, as a matter of fact, I, s I, watch, I watched it now for the second time fully from the beginning of the, to the end. So I, I haven't watched it so, ma so many times as you might think. Um, and I, I, I see, I, I think, um, um, I read the script and I know how to prepare to it uh, and, and not to give uh, too much to a, to, to a certain uh, scene. Um, just to, to, to give the minimum that it deserves and, uh, and then go from there to, to another uh, stage of, uh, of, of emotions. And uh, until the end, that's, uh, there, there are three scenes of kind of uh, climax of the, of, the, of the character that he opens himself. But he, we see uh, gradually the process of, of uh, turning himself up, I mean, inside out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I try, to, I try to, keep it, to keep it, you know. This is my last question, and I hope there'll be lots of questions from the audience. Um, in 1974, I was 17, and I was lucky enough to spend the summer at a kibbutz in the Beit Shan called Beit Alpha. And there was a guy there from Amsterdam, and he had a record player, and we had four records, one of which was Cat Stevens' Tea for the Tillerman. And the fourth cut on that album is My Lady Darbanville, <laughs> which is the song that Itzik, Itzik sings in the first time they do karaoke. How do you know that song? <laughs> well, you know, People don't need to be alive to know <laughs> songs. They could, they could listen to old songs. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that I did, uh, I did like a playlist of all the things that I, all the songs that I thought that maybe would have remind um, Tova and Meir uh, of their youth and 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 mostly songs from the 70s. And I just kept listening to this really long playlist while writing. And I just, um, that song was, um, while I was writing that scene, I, I listened to the song and there was that moment that I just like the image of Tova getting up to dance just came to me at the, at the chorus. And I just like, I was like, I, I, I pressed stop and I was like, oh, let's try it again. And I kept imagining that scene and, and it just, it, it kind of like, it, it gave me the scene, the song gave me the scene, because the scene was Itzik Sings. And I thought maybe I'll take like a, you know, like a Tom Jones, like a Delilah, I thought, something. But there was something, I guess, kind of unpredictable in choosing Cat Stevens, and, and there was, I think inherently in the song, there's something very kind of like, Spanish and sexy, even though it's about like a dead body, actually. <laughs> but I, I, I felt that there was like this strange contradiction in the song that is the, the same contradiction that I, that I wanted for the scene and, and that I wanted for the film as a whole. Um, yeah, and I, and I, and I did um, you know, challenge myself again and again and try to change the songs from the, the first idea that I had, but eventually, like the day before the shooting, I, I just went with my gut, you know? Well, I'd like to compliment you because that is the finest era in American popular music. There's no discussion. <laughs> in my youth, it, it was very popular. I mean, I, he was one of my idols when I was young. Yeah. Uh, I actually had to ask for uh, an approval from Mr. Yusuf. Yusuf Islam? Yeah. Let's open it up. Uh, are there questions from the audience? There's a question there. Do we have a microphone? Was that a yes or a no? No. Okay, please say your question and I'll repeat it. And, and go ahead. was one of the sublim subliminal messages that rules have to be broken, that the status quo has to be shattered, perhaps in order to reconstruct the status quo. Was that one of the messages that you were aiming at? Um, you know, there's a lot of subliminal messages in films, like a lot, uh, and that's definitely one of them, yeah. 
I mean, I feel that there's something, um, you know, when you want to create this, like, arc of somebody um, that really feels that he's changing, you know, that you can watch him and be like, oh, is that the guy that we saw in the first scene? So you really have to, 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 to push him to his limits. Um, and yeah, and, and you know what? It's even if, even like the mayor's character went so far to, like you said, kind of like collect himself again and to kind of like figure it out, it's still like such a minor change. Like it's, it's, it's so small, but what's, what, but the beauty of it is that for, for their relationship and for that couple, it's huge, you know? And I think that that was, you know, the beauty of like making characters transform in films, that you don't really need them to kind of like change their lives. They could just like talk a little bit differently with their wife and it's a lot and you can like, and you understand that it's a lot, you know? Yeah. Could you speak to the choices of architecture in both interior and ex exterior settings? Yeah, so um, we shot the film in uh, Holon, which is, the, which is the city that actually my parents live in. Um, and you know, these are the new Israeli suburbs. That's how most of Israel l looks right now. And people don't film it because they think it's ugly. And, and they think that the people that live there have like a boring life. Um, and I just felt, you know, that it's, it's, it's so interesting, you know, every time I, I stood at my parents' balcony and look at the, at the, you know, the new Israeli suburbs, I felt like that there's so many stories there and it tells, it tells us so much about, you know, the, the current, um, you know, Israeli ideals and what are we uh, striving for in life and, and if this is, you know, if this is the comfortable and pleasant life, what does it say about us? Um, so yeah, so I thought that, that it would be interesting not only to, to film it, but to actually make it as, as, uh, as unboring as possible and as exciting as possible. It's like to take the most generic neighborhood and to turn it into, you know, gone with the wind, and uh, yeah, and to have moments where, thank you, and to have moments where, where it, it feels like the loneliest person, the place in the world, because it is, it, it could get that way, but other moments that, um, you know, even though ironic, it actually feels like the most glamorous place in the world. Quite the journey from the Bukharim quarter to the Holon penthouse. maybe on the cultural references within that uh, this movie. You know, Tova's comments on the low-class people, the account of the Latino, the references to Greek vacation, maybe on, on that range of people. Can we, can we comment a little bit about the range of people um, that are referred to in the film? Yes, so uh, there, it's not only like the suburbs, it's also specifically, I guess, um, Again, not because I wanted to make like a, a, a satire or something, you know. Uh, I just, uh, those are the people that I know and that's the place where I uh, brought up and lived. These are my parents, so I, I didn't try to um, criticize, you know. It was all about just like observing. And I think that, you know, what I realized after seeing it and after reading the reviews <laughs> about the film, is that actually uh, it, it says a lot about, um, I guess, like the Sephardic community uh, in Israel that is, uh, you know, is not struggling anymore, that have, they have a comfortable life. And in this life, the, the ideals of, of um, you know, in this middle class, there's different, 
levels. levels and obviously you know everybody in this building are middle class but the penthouse is the upper middle class <laughs> and there's another and there's another so th inside th there's a lot of nuances of 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 everyone's feeling of inferiority and kind of like um i guess like a, a sense of lost identity and loss loss of the 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 authenticity, like the, the previous authenticity, because people have kind of like covered themselves with all kinds of symbols of wealth and of, and of status. And inside that, you kind of like, you know, you, you, I mean, Tova is striving and, and looking for that authenticity, the way her father used to, used to dance and stuff like that. So it's about like, I guess, like lost identity and, and maybe in a way, finding identity in this, I guess, lack of authenticity by being just authentic to yourself, you know? Uh, at the end, they are dancing a dance that is completely not the Rambetico, and it's, it has nothing to do with their roots. It's just something that they, you know, um, collected and tried to, but it, it, it's authentic to them, and, and that's just the beauty of it. Um, to, to my opinion, I think uh, the, it's, it's less social um, levels and, uh, and look of Moshe uh, into, into these people. It's less uh, levels of hierarchy between classes or something like this. I think it's more of a psychological journey that each character goes through. And uh, uh, the psychological journey is, uh, consists of many things. It's personal, it's, it's uh, missing things in life, it's striving for things in life. Uh, and one of the aspects is, is the, uh, the social differences between people, but it's mainly it's combination of many things that, uh, that each of one of us is, uh, consists of, uh, psycholog psychological journey, and uh, what, what nice about this couple and uh, that they, are ne they don't give up and they want to make a change in their life. It's not supposed to be economical change, but it's, it's a change, I mean, because each one of them uh, and in a way, each one of us uh, lives in his own jail that he creates for himself. And there is a strive for every one of us in each level, and it's the fair, but, but it it's exists in, in, in each uh, person. We would like to overcome this jail that we uh, put uh, the, ourselves in and to break it and to, to aspire to new things and to different things and never give up because and you see this couple which they are the mature couple they are aging and they don't want to miss the this opportunity that uh, occurred to them She asked what Moshe's parents thought of the movie. Um, so just just to make it clear how close the characters are to my parents, all the the dresses that Tova is wearing in the film are from my mother's closet, <laughs> uh, including the the crocodile shoes. <laughs> it's also my mother's. We completely ruined them. Um, but yeah, I was, um, you know, it's funny because it, I grew up in a family that kept telling me, oh, make a film about us, yeah, like, <laughs> and I was like, no, no, I, I want to do my own thing, and at some point I was like, yeah, maybe I can do that, and then in the process I started realizing that maybe, maybe it's not a good idea, maybe, <laughs> maybe there are parts that they don't want to share, and um, and I didn't, I didn't allow them to see the film until like, until I think it was uh, uh, at the Jerusalem Film Festival because I thought, uh, I thought, oh yeah, they're gonna watch the film with an audience and there's gonna be like celebrities um, and their kind of like pride in me would uh, overcome their embarrassment, <laughs> which makes sense. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, but then, uh, uh, but then the, the the screen ended, and I looked for them, and I found like I I, I, I got out of the cinematic, and I saw like a group of people like standing in a circle and clapping, and inside my mother was dancing uh, rambetico. <laughs> And yeah, and, and I saw that and I was like, okay, I think it's okay. Well, uh, well that means any publicity is good publicity. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, I just want to say that what's, I think that what's important in that is that when, like, I, I love my parents so much and I love these characters so much and I think or I want to believe that their acceptance of it uh, not only it's not because the 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 you know it's not because the pride overcame the 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 embarrassment it's 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 really because they they are not ashamed to be those people uh, they I think they 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 like the fact that I showed you know the difficult parts because this is like a real person, and and that's um, and I think to to show the the struggles that they go through along with the beautiful dresses and the good looking you know glamours. I think all of it together um, made them um, proud and and also just like happy that their voice uh, was heard, and also they were watching it with a lot of other people, strangers that were crying and laughing over the things that they see as their lives. So, so I think that they got the recognition that it's not theirs, it's like people experience these things and it's yes, fine. If I may say just last, uh, yeah. last sentence, that even if, if you see the characters sometimes ridiculed or grotesque, but uh, Moshe did it out of love, so he, he, and it was also in his work uh, on set, he did the thing, he, he loved the, the characters, it, 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 even though they are sometimes ridiculous, but, but, but he loved them. He, he did everything out of love, and I think uh, this is a, um, a, a great virtue of this film. Thank you. When we work out of love, things work out. Tomorrow night, Thank West you. Newton Cinema, we have a spectacular film called The Lost Transport. It's a World War II film, um, the actor, Hannah Van Fleet is with us from Amsterdam. She's actually with us tonight, and we're thrilled to have her. So please come tomorrow night to West Newton. Thank you very much, Moshe Rosenthal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lars. Sam, goodbye. And thank you all for coming.